In this one, we're going to be making a sorted leaderboard system. Now, before I start this video, I just want to let you know I'm going to be using nodes that come with my newest plugin on the Unreal Engine Marketplace called Toolbox. It's $12.99, but I like to do sales when I can, and I'm only using it for the sorting feature. Otherwise, you don't really need the plugin for the leaderboard itself. So anyway, let's get on with it. Right now, I'm just in the first person template. Uh, I have two of these little things, which are essentially my uh, score box actors that I just made. Uh, you can pretty much just take a box trigger and create a blueprint with it, which is essentially what I did. Uh, and in here, I have a variable called score to add. It is instance editable and is defaulted to five. So I can set that right here. So right now here, it's just 10. And then this one, it's the default value, which is five. Uh, and what we're going to do in here is in the first person character, we're just going to add this score to their score. So I'm going to go to the first person character and we'll add a variable. We'll call this score and we'll set this to a float. And just for the sake of simple multiplayer, we're going to set it to replicated. This isn't going to be a long term thing, but just to demonstrate, we're going to set up a really simple net replication process. So go ahead and hold control and click and drag this into the viewport. We're going to create a custom event and we're going to call this add score multi. Uh, and just we're going to have a float input and we're just going to call this score to add. And we're going to set this to multicast so that it's multicast on all clients. Go ahead and put a plus here. Do float plus float. And we'll set our score to the value of the sum. So all that's done. Uh, I need to copy and paste this though because this is going to be the one we run on the server. Uh, I'm going to add score server and we'll set this to run on the server and from here we will add score multi so this is a really simple multicast system uh, essentially what happens is something is called on the server and then the server which has authority is going to tell all the clients to update this value for the specific player that this is replicated on go ahead and comment this out and call it score in our actual score box we'll take the actor that overlaps the box uh, to get this node all you have to do is click on the collision component and then click begin overlap and just add that right here and with the other actor we'll cast to the first person character and what this does is it exposes all of our first person character uh, functions which is something that we're going to because we actually need to call the event which is add score uh, which only runs through the first person character object reference which derives from the first person character so add score server all i do is hit control and drag this out and then we'll just plug it right in right there and we're pretty much done uh, that adds the score sets it up so that all players can see what your score is on the server and now we actually need to make the leaderboard itself so i'll just go down here to the user interface create widget blueprint we'll call this ui underscore leaderboard and inside of our leaderboard, we're going to add a vertical box. And this vertical box is going to contain all of the scores and characters that are going to load up on the screen. And that's pretty much all we need to do here. I'm going to set this to make sure this is a variable so that we can actually uh, spawn stuff inside of here. And we're actually going to set up the widget that's going to be dynamically loaded inside this per player. So uh, next up, what I'm going to do is add another user interface. We're going to call this UI leaderboard child. And the leaderboard child is just going to contain the basic information that we need. So I'm going to do an overlay. And you can style this however you want to. You don't really have to do this the exact way I'm doing it. I'm going to go ahead and do an image just for like a little background image. We'll set this to wrap the whole thing. Darken this. And we'll get some text. This text is going to appear. We'll center it. We'll copy and paste that. And we'll take this and actually make it orient from the right. We can set this to score zero. And then this will be the player's name. And there we go. That's pretty much the way it's going to look. So we're going to load one of these per player in our leaderboard. So we're going to go over to the graph. And on construct, what we're going to do is we're going to actually set these, value, these text values. So this is going to be name text. Make sure it's set to variable. Set this one to variable as well. Score text. Yeah, so both of the texts need to be set to variables. Take both of these. And we'll set text to a text value. Do the same thing for the score text. 
plug these in and we will get our values. So for these, I'm actually going to use strings because with strings, you can append to them and get certain information a little bit quicker. So we're just going to go ahead down here, drag off of there and do string. And then this is essentially the node that we're looking for. I do the same thing for this as well. And we will promote this to a variable called player name. I'm going to compile and save this. That will make this instance editable and expose it on spawn so that we can set the player's name for each of the players that exist on the leaderboard. And then for this one, we'll do append so that I can have like a little score equals, you know, and then we'll have, we'll have a space right here and then we'll actually put the score right here. So I'm going to use a float variable. We'll do score. And we'll set this to also be instance editable and expose on spawn, set it to a float. So this will be the actual score that we pass into the widget. And I could just plug this in directly, and you can do this if you don't have the plugin that I was talking about earlier, but I'm actually gonna do stringify. We'll do stringify float, which is part of the toolbox plugin because this makes the float a little bit easier to read. So if you look at the description, essentially you have a 1000.00, it'll return a 1000 with a pretty comma and everything. So it just kind of makes things look a little bit nicer. I'll go ahead and compile and save that. And this is pretty much done. Next up, we're actually gonna go to the leaderboard and we'll finish off the system by going into our graph and we're going to load one of the widgets into the vertical box per player. So what we're gonna do here is do a get all actors of class. And I have to let you guys know to be kind of frugal with how you use this node. There's a lot of people that will advise you not to use this node all the time. Uh, this is one of the situations where you'll actually need to use it because it's not it's pretty resource heavy. But in this case, since we actually need to get all of the actors of a said class, we're going to use it for the leaderboard. So for the actor class, we'll do first person character because that's the character that we're using. And we'll do for each. And then for each of the players, what we're going to do is we're going to create a widget. And that widget is, of course, going to be our child widget that we just made. Uh, and then we kind of have these two things that we can add, the player's name or the score. Uh, and typically when you create your widget, I'm sure you're used to adding it to the viewport, but what we're actually going to do here is we're going to add this as a child to the vertical box. So add child. I don't know what the difference is between these two things, but I'm just going to add child to vertical box. And we're going to plug this content right in there. So it's just adding one of these widgets for each of the players and putting it inside the vertical box for us to see. So the player's name, I'm just going to get the display name by dragging that off there. And then I'm going to get the score. And we'll plug that straight in there. So pretty simple. Compile this and save it. And in our first person character, when I press tab on the keyboard, We'll go ahead and do a flip-flop. And we will show that leaderboard. So create widget. We'll create the leaderboard and add to viewport. Or remove from parent if it's B. So pretty easy. We'll go ahead and start this with two clients. I'm just gonna set the net mode to play as client. We'll click play and, oh, there we go, in the world. There's our boxes. I'll go ahead into here, get my score up. And my score is now 60 and the other player's score is zero. So we'll go ahead and get his score. I'm just gonna run through this a couple times. Uh, and my score is now 30 and his is 60, but I kind of want the highest score to appear at the top of the list. So for the next part of this tutorial, and this is the part of the tutorial that you need to pay for the plugin to actually be able to do, we're going to sort all of the scores from top to bottom. So whoever has the highest score will be on the top and vice versa. So how are we actually going to do that? Uh, for testing, I'm actually going to take a couple first person characters and drop them out into the world and we'll make their score actually instance editable. So there we go. I'll go ahead and compile and save that. And now I can actually set a score manually. So we'll say this guy's score can be like 503. I don't know why I accidentally pressed three. I'll set this guy's score to 64. And we'll make this guy and set his score to like 9,000. And this guy's score will be set to 250. We'll go ahead back to using just one client. And now we'll be able to see their scores on the list. So here's our guys. 
Uh, our scores are not in order at all. My score is still zero, although I am at the bottom of the list, which is what I want. We want to actually organize these based on how high the value is. So we're going to go ahead into our leaderboard, and we're going to change things up a little bit in here. I'm actually going to keep all this stuff. We're just going to disconnect right here, and we're going to put this aside just for now so that we can actually go ahead and start sorting these actors based on what their score is. So we'll go ahead and do another for each loop. We're going to get score, and then we're going to add And we're going to just use this array add. And from here, we can promote this to a variable. And we'll call this scores. So what that does is we have an empty array, which has a list of all the scores inside of it. And for each of the player scores, we add it to that list so that we can go from here further. We're also going to take this, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just actually going to copy and paste this node. We're going to add the reference to the player to another array. And we're going to call this array unsorted players so those are our obviously our unsorted players just so we can get a reference so we don't have to keep using this get all actors of class again using this node all the time is not a good thing I'm gonna compile that and save it and now we're gonna load the magic node sort floats so again this node is not going to be available in your version of the engine unless you purchase the blueprint toolbox plugin you guys should definitely go check it out the uh, the functions that are inside this plugin are actually super useful, and this is one of the best uses for this node specifically, which is why I actually wanted to make this tutorial, because this is always something that I've had a hard time with, and, uh, and the fact that I have a node now that does it all for me is really easy. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get our scores, copy and paste that, and for unsorted, we're going to put our unsorted scores into here, and from here we're going to take our output indices and for each index. So for each index, we are going to take our unsorted players array, and we're going to get a copy of this array element. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our unsorted players array, duplicate it, and we'll say sorted players. Go ahead and add this out here. We'll add. And for each of these, we are going to add a reference to our unsorted players to our new sorted players. Essentially, the indices that come out of this, what it does is it sorts based on how high the score is. So the highest score is going to come out on the highest, but it takes the old indices, and they're all going to be jumbled. So what we do with those jumbled old indices is we're going to go through them for each of them, and we're going to get the subsequent index from the sorted players, and we're going to set that reference to the new sorted players, because this for loop is going to run in order based on which one of these is the highest. And once that's finished, we have our final stair to the staircase that we just made and we are going to do for each of the sorted players now we're all going in order now and then we're going to bring this back down oh I guess I don't need this anymore and we will go ahead and add each of our children to the leaderboard so there's our little sort system we'll go ahead and save that and now we'll try out the game and see how that works so there we go, 9,000 at the top, 503, 250, 64, and then zero. I'm gonna try to work my score up a little bit so I can get a little bit of a higher score here. And my score is now 100, so I'm ranked ahead of the person with 64 now. And I can probably keep going back and forth and try to get more than 250. And eventually, maybe I'll even work my way up to the top. Oh, I have 240, <laughs> so close. There we go, now I got 300, I'm up there now. So. That's essentially how you would set up a sorted leaderboard system. Thank you guys so much for checking out the tutorial, and I will see you guys in the next one.